Hi guys, Katrina here in December Wheelie. Really. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been a hectic couple of days here. Um, first of all, Max hasn't been too well all today, haven't you, son? You sick three times today, weren't you? Anyway, if he's not better by tomorrow, I might phone the vet. But uh, today video about is about uh, misconceptions about uh, disability living allowance or PIP or as it's called personal independence payment. I'm in the process now of uh, being changed from DLA to PIP. Uh, it can take quite a long time to get an assessment, which I had a couple of weeks ago, and they sent me a letter to yesterday uh, saying that they had all the information needed to make a decision and that they would be in contact with me when a decision was made. It takes months to get PEP or DLA. People are under the uh, under the impression that it is like other benefits, like job seekers allowance, where you fill out the form and you get it within two weeks. That's with DLA or with PEP as it is now. That is not the case. First of all, you have to fill out a form. It's, I think it's called how your disability affects you or something. Uh, I go to the Citizens Advice Bureau to help me to fill out them, them type of things because they're literally like an exam paper. I mean, some exam papers that I've done are actually easier than, than this, than the, the PEP form. And my friend who's going for through university is, has said that the, her PEP form was worse than her, her final exams. Uh, once you get the, the form sent in along with your evidence, they then send you to uh, Capita. There are ATOS, which are, are infamous here in the UK for for an assessment, and they're absolutely infamous for this because so you get all kinds of dodgy assessors. The the one that they sent me seemed to be okay, but we will tell as as time goes on and when I eventually get my assessment or my results. Uh, they then, once your, uh, when the assessor comes out to do your assessment or, they, or you go to see them and do your assessment, whichever is suitable for your disability, they will ask you lots of questions and they will ask you the same question again later on in the assessment to try and trick you into saying a different thing because they will ask the question in a different way so and they will do that also on the form so you have to be really careful about that uh, then once they have typed in all their information into their laptop or computer or whatever that will be sent on in your file to a decision maker who will in turn make a decision on your claim. Sorry, nose is itchy. That can take months. And for some people, unfortunately, they get turned down even though they are actually disabled because the assessor has made a mistake or has basically lied on the on the forms as unfortunately has 
happen to some people. Uh, my oh, sorry, my experiences so far with Capita have been okay. Uh, the assessment was only supposed to last forty five minutes, uh, but no. It would have been around 30, 45 minutes, but I, I got got her for an, over an hour because my condition is so complex. It took me ages to rattle through all my medications, my specialists, and so on and so forth. Basically, I have three orthopedic surgeons because of my EDS. Uh, Yes. Uh, just a, and then if you get uh, somebody who's not familiar with the condition that you have, as is often the case with EDS, it can take a lot longer in general as well, because they have to research it. And that's what they're currently doing with me, because it's been sent off to the decision maker. And uh, they they seem to be taking a while to get back back to me whether I've been awarded it or not. I'm really hoping that they do award me it because that means if I lose my uh, high rate mobility compon component of DLA or enhanced, I think it's called now on, on PEP, I will lose my adapted car which basically leaves me housebound. Now they do have accessible pu public transport here in Northern Ireland, but it's, it's dicey as to whether you will actually get a bus driver who will stop for you and put out the ramp and so, so on and so forth. Uh, there are three levels of DLA and I think two levels of PEP. I'm not uh, totally familiar with PEP because uh, it's only been introduced in the past year or so here in Northern Ireland. Uh, so bear with me. When I was on DLA, I was on. Uh, there, sorry, there was three levels. There was a. Uh, Ordinary, uh, there was low care or high care, uh, no, low care, metal care and high care, and that was for the, the care side of the DLA, and that, w that would be to help you towards your care costs, say if you had to hire a carer or if you needed specialist equipment like a, or like say gloves or something to help you with your personal care. Uh, for the mobility side there is the same low, middle and high mobility. High mobility is the one that would cover the cost of the car. Now the car is not free. People, people have a misconception that the people on DLA get free cars. They are not free. You pay 50 plus pounds a week towards the cost of the, the car hire because the car is not actually yours. It belongs to Motability which is a government contractor to, uh, that provides the cars. And on top of that, some cars you have to pay an extremely high advance payment. Say for the like of a small car, it would be more than likely no deposit if you were, had no adaptions or if you had a really, really tiny car, like a smart car or something. 
Well, uh, if you needed a larger car, say, uh, a people carrier, or say if you have a big family or if you need extra space to carry a wheelchair or equipment, you would have to pay an advance payment, possibly in running into the thousands. And if you need a if you need a WAV or a wheelchair accessible vehicle, the cost of the advance payment could run into the tens of thousands. I mean, you could really put it this way: you could really buy uh, your own car for the cost of the advance payment on a, a wheelchair accessible vehicle. And the reason why I think they're so the the wabs are so expensive is because they need quite a bit of work done to make them accessible for some people. It's not like you can just uh, slap a ramp wrap on the back of it and make it and say that it's oh it's now wheelchair accessible when it doesn't have tie downs or anything to make it safe for a wheelchair user to travel in. And some, well, most drivers like me have, who are in, well, Max is having a wee dream. Most, apologies, most uh, drivers of, like me who are wheelchair users and some who are not wheelchair users will need adaptions of some sort to the controls of the car. Uh, whether it be... Uh, hand controls like what I have, which are basically uh, a lever behind the steering wheel that uh, goes down to the gas and the brake and controls the gas and the brake instead of using your legs. In my car you pull, you push away to, to brake and then you pull back and then push down to accelerate. Uh, when I was buying, well, when I was ordering my car, I had to pay uh, two grand towards the the cost of the hand controls, and they can only be fitted to uh, an automatic car. They can't be fitted to a manual car. And plus I had to do a extended driving test as well because of of this this uh, adaption because it is a slightly more complex than a normal uh, car to drive. I will do a video on my car possibly next week if I get good weather. But I'm I'm hoping I get uh, news about my there's Max snoring. <laughs> I'm hoping I get news about my uh, application soon. So fingers crossed. Wish me luck. Anyway, if Max isn't better by tomorrow, I'm going to take him to the vet. I think he might have yet eaten something. Plus these fireworks don't help. I, I hate fireworks. You know, the vein of every dog owner's life. Anyway, if you like this video, please uh, like, comment, subscribe and share, please, because it helps people to find this video with people with uh, YouTube's algorithms. Okay, see you next week.